Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks so much for coming back to my channel and checking out some more reviews. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing a Yamaha MG10XU. This is a nice small form factor, uh, kind of a small venue, 10 channel mixer. You've certainly seen, if you're watching this video, you've probably watched uh, anywhere between one and a thousand other videos about the MG10XU and I'm not, maybe the whole MG line. I'm not going to go into all of the specifics. There's, there's tons of that out there. I'm going to give you uh, the reasons that I got this board, you know, assuming everything else is okay, right? Assuming everything else is, is, is what we would expect. What are the differentiators, right? What are the things that are going to, for instance, separate this from a Mackie board in the same general price range or a Behringer board in the same general price range? Uh, why did I go with Yamaha? And maybe some of those will, you know, will resonate with you. Uh, first of all, it's a Yamaha, right? So everything on it feels professional. The resistance on, on all of the knobs and the rotary controls, uh, it, it's just the right amount of resistance. It doesn't spin freely. There's a nice detent right at the top of, of all of the EQ settings. Uh, you, you know, again, it's a metal chassis, right? You know, some of this you already know, uh, plastic sides, but a, but a metal chassis. It's a Yamaha unit. So that's the first thing that really began to draw me more towards this than like the Mackies or the, or the Behringers. Not knocking the Mackies or Behringers at all. It's just why I went with this unit ultimately. The, the next main reason I went with the Yamaha, and it's kind of invisible in this view right here, are the preamps. So this unit is by all accounts, the, really the MG line by all accounts, uh, it has exceptionally clean preamps, especially for this price point. They're not noted for being particularly warm, but you could kind of fatten that up in post or, or, or with the effects or something like that. But they're very, very clean preamps, which leads me to the next reason I picked this, and that was because it has XLR outs, which I was surprised to find in a board of this form, this size uh, and price point. I was really glad to find XLR outs. That's what I've mean, got these two cables sitting here for because what I'm coming out of is the Yamaha unit. What I'm going into is a TurboSound IP2000 column array speaker. And that speaker has a left-right input or a two-channel, basically it's a left-right, it's a column array. It's not a lot of spatial imaging for stereo. Uh, sounds great, but uh, so there are two channel inputs and you can fun functionally that's a left right and they're XLR, they're combination XLR inputs just like these are up here. So I wanted to preserve the clean preamps, the signal from these clean preamps coming out of this board by using the XLRs, which I'm pretty sure everyone's going to concede is the cleaner signal. So coming out of that right into that very clean sounding turbo sound uh, IP2000 board. So XLR outs was a big selling point for me. Um, as I back to kind of just some of the basic features that boards should have, and you're glad that a board this side does have, uh, one's a high pass filter. It's just an 80 hertz knee filter. Uh, that's to ensure that you can minimize the lower uh, sounds in the mic, uh, mic handling, stuff like that. Uh, it, great to have the high pass filter as just a single button push here on each one of the lines and then a, a 20 dB pad. So if you've got a very, very hot source coming in that you just can't, you can't get the signal down low enough, you pop on that 26 decibel pad and it attenuates the signal down. That's a really, really couple of really nice features to have that not all of the smaller boards have. Of course, this has 48 volt phantom power on the first four mic lines here. These yellow knobs are the next major reason I bought this board, and that's because it's a one knob compression. One knob compressors on the two vocal lines. I call this the two vocal lines because, in my opinion, the way this board is set up is to have two vocals and two instrumentalists right there. That's, that's basically, in my opinion, the way this board is set up with a lot of ancillary add-ons if you want to do, you know, tracks or keyboards, you know, maybe some additional sounds, stuff like that, or mic a cajon or something like that, you know. Uh, you could set up a lot of that, but basically two for vocals, two for instruments, and on those two vocal, quote unquote, my words here, channels, single knob compressors and a good compressor. That's a really, really nice feature to have directly on the board. Uh, kind of along with that, I suppose, are the onboard effects, which, you know, I, I just, I wasn't considering any board that did not have onboard effects. These onboard effects are very clean. They're very, very clean. 
One thing that I wish this board had was combinations of effects. It just as reverb or play, you know, dr um, uh, delay or uh, chorus or flanger. There are no combinations in there. And now on the Behringer board, that's one of the big points of the Behringer boards uh, in this price range. You can get, you have 99, and most of those are combinations. Nonetheless, these are very, very good quality effects, especially my, one of my favorites is number three, the, the reverb room one. Uh, along with each effect, you have a single parameter to control, which is a heck, heck of a lot better than no parameter to control. So in a reverb, you can change the depth, so to speak, not just the level of the send. In the delays, you can change the delay time, the width of the phaser and stuff like that. So it's nice to have some parametric control over the effects. Uh, I, I do wish there were more, but of course, again, this is a very, very small unit. One more item that I found incredibly cool is if we flip this unit over, we see we've got two threaded bungs right there which go with that. You simply screw that in to those, to this mount. This is a microphone mount that pivots and swivels. You put that on a mic stand, and now you have that unit right at your fingertips at whatever angle you want. That's really nice. That's really a really neat little feature. And I have to confess, I don't know if the other boards had that, but uh, this one did, and it was one of the reasons I went with it for sure, because I was glad to see that. One part of the board that personally I wish were a little better or a little different is the power supply. But the more I think about it, it's, it's, an, it, you know, it's offshore power, right? It's not in the board. You've got this, this converter, this big rat thing here that you can really kind of use that to do do your curls for the day that thing's hefty but um you know hey that allows you to get a smaller board a smaller form factor with more features in your board and more connections and stuff if i mean look at that power supply that would have taken up a lot of real estate in this uh, you know in the construction here so kind of to, to make up for it they certainly gave us a nice connector. Very nice screw-on connector to hold that in there. There's plenty of length of wire before and after the, the, um, uh, the converter here. So all in all, nothing to complain about with the power supply. You know, from that convenience standpoint, it would have been cool just to have that on board, but hey, no problem there. So that pretty much wraps up my reasons why I went with the Yamaha MG10 XU. Uh, and that was clean preamps stereo XLR outs, single knob compression, onboard effects, high quality construction, everything feels professional about it, and a really convenient way to make and put this mountable directly on a mic stand with this, uh, this 20, I think it's like 20 bucks uh, for this mic stand adapter. Okay, hope this helps you in your quest to find your own board. And uh, if this has helped you, please uh, leave a review. I do my best to answer and respond to, to all the reviews. Talk to you later.